Hello, can you multiply 41 times 51 in your head? Keep watching to find out how. And today we're going to learn a very, very powerful technique that we can use to multiply two numbers together and we're going to apply it to two digit multiplication. So we'll have two digits on the top multiply by another number that's two digits in length and we're going to learn a method that we are going to be able to use in your head to uh, basically multiply any two digit numbers together. Now a lot of these tips that I'm sharing with you or uh, tricks or special cases. This is really not one of those. This is something you can you can really apply to any two-digit multiplication problem, and it's really called the uh, crisscross method of multiplication. And truth be told, you can apply it to three and four-digit numbers also. And we'll we'll learn about that a little bit later. What you basically do is uh, first just focus your efforts in the right-hand column. Uh, and so the first thing you need to do to get the rightmost digit of the answer is multiply the two digits in the rightmost column. So 1 times 1 gives us 1. Easy enough. Now you have one of the digits in the final answer. Okay. Now in order to get the middle digit, the next most digit to the left of the 1, what you need to do is do the crisscross. That's going to be imagine an X superimposed over these digits just like this. So we have 4 times 1 gives us 4. We have 1 times 5 gives us 5. So we take 4 plus the 5. So what you're doing is doing this multiplication and adding to it this multiplication. So 4 plus 5 gives you 9. So that is the middle digit. You have a 9 there. Okay, easy enough. That's the crisscross part of it. And then for the leftmost digit, uh, you just multiply the leading digits together. 4 times 5 gives us 20. So you put a 20 here because here we're at the left hand side of the problem so we just put both digits down for 2091. And that is the answer ladies and gentlemen. You just look at the right hand digit. 1 times 1 gives us the 1. For the middle digit you do a crisscross so you have 4 times uh, the 1 plus this multiplication which is 5 so 4 plus 5 gives us 9 and then for the leading guy you have 4 times 5 gives us 20 and the answer is 2091. Okay now for the next problem to illustrate this we're going to proceed in exactly the same way. Once you know the basic technique for crisscross multiplication uh, you can apply it to any of these problems. So first focus your efforts in the right hand column. 0 times 2 gives you 0. So you go ahead and mentally hold that 0 as your last digit or go ahead and write it down if, you're, if you have pencil and paper out in front of you. And then in order to get the next digit to the left you do a crisscross. So you have 3 times 2 gives you 6. 0 times 1 gives you 0 and you're going to add these together. So 6 plus 0 gives me 6. So I put a 6 here and that takes care of that digit. And then now we turn our attention to the leading column. 3 times 1 gives us 3. So 360 and that's the answer. And I think most people would agree that doing it this way is much faster than multiplying every digit and getting two lines of, of numbers here and then having to add them all up uh, here. And so you know you, you at least have a shot of being able to do this mentally. With practice you'll definitely get there. Okay, now our next problem is 13 times 12. It's a problem that uh, a lot of people would turn to a calculator to get the answer to. Uh, you can estimate it pretty easily, but with crisscross multiplication, rapidly doing two-digit multiplication is not a problem. We work in the right-hand column first. 3 times 2 gives us 6, so we write a 6 down here. Next, we work on the next digit over by doing crisscross multiplication. 1 times 2 gives us 2. 3 times 1 gives us 3, so 2 plus 3 gives us 5. So we write the 5 down and we're done with that digit. Now let's focus on the leftmost. 1 times 1 gives you 1. The answer is 156. I think you would agree that most people, once you know this technique, could certainly do this in their head. And even if you're not doing it in your head, even if you have pencil and paper out, it's still much faster to do it this way than it is to do it the traditional way. Okay, our next problem is 22 times 12. So again, we work in the right-hand column. 2 times 2 gives us 4, so we write that in the rightmost digit. And in order to find the answer to the middle digit here, we do crisscross. So 2 times 2 here is 4. We keep that in our head. 2 times 1 is 2. So adding these up, we have 4 plus 2 gives us 6. And when you're doing the crisscross step, I really want you to think about it like this. You kind of in, in the air or, or right above your paper, just use your pencil to just in the air just go to sort of glide across and say to yourself, okay, that's 4 because 2 times 2 is 4 plus this guy multiplied is going to give me 2, so 4 plus 2 gives me 6 and I, I write that down or I mentally hold it in my head. 
Next, for the leftmost digit, 2 times 1 gives us 2. So the answer is 264. And I can guarantee you that this is much faster than, than multiplying digit by digit, putting a 0, multiplying digit by digit, drawing a line, adding them all together. At some point, you're going to make a mistake trying to do that mentally. But with these lower numbers, you're going to be able to handle it. Now, up till this point, I've given you what I consider to be the sort of the easier problems with two-digit multiplication because there was no carrying involved. In other words, every multiplication I did, I could just write the answer down here. And so I didn't really have to carry anything over to the next to the next step. And so what we're going to do now is the problems after this one are going to involve a little bit of carrying. So you're going to have to carry a few a couple of digits mentally, but it's still going to be faster than than working through it all and carrying all the stuff by hand. And if you if you think back to our problems, like you know, a minute ago I gave you 13 times 12. Well, these were what I what I'm gonna call you know lower number problems. In other words, 13 is pretty close to 10, you know, compared to like 19, let's say. 12 is pretty close to 10 compared to you know like 18 or 19. So when we do all of the multiplication steps here, we're gonna get single digit answers. 3 times 2 is 6. We do the crisscross, we get a single digit, 1 times 1, you know, is um, is one, so we're going to have the same thing. In other words, uh, or another example, remember when we just did 30 times 12, same thing. 12 is, is pretty close to 10, it's, it's lower digit numbers, so uh, that coupled with the fact that 30 is pretty low digits meant that when we did all of the multiplications we had single digit answers. Now what we're going to do now is get into some problems where when we do some of these little multiplications we're going to get two digit answers, so we're going to have to carry uh, something over into an intermediate step, but I promise if you invest a little bit of time learning how that works and practicing it, you're going to have a tremendous advantage doing everyday arithmetic with two-digit multiplication. Okay, here we have a problem that we're going to begin to get into a little bit more challenging problems, but still something you could definitely get good at doing in your head. And even if you're not doing it in your head, it can still speed up your arithmetic and your multiplication on your exams and on your test. 15 times 12. This is an example of what I'm going to call higher number problems. 15 is, is, is not so close to 10, so it's, it's getting up there. So what you're going to have here, if you just follow the technique exactly as I've told you, which is all you need to do, is you do 5 times 2. But notice that here, 5 times 2 is 10, and that's a two-digit number. So in all of the other problems, when we did our first multiplication, we had a single digit there, so we wrote the digit down. It made those problems much, much easier to do in our head. But now we have 5 times 2, and that's 10. So we have two digits. You can't just write 10 down here, because if you start doing that, you're just going to get numbers that are too large, and they're going to be the wrong answer. You do need to do a little bit of carrying here. And so 5 times 2 is 10, so we're going to write the 0. And I'm going to write the little 1 up here, and I'm going to put a little, you know, I don't even know what this is, a little sun or a little smiley face, whatever you want to call it, surrounding the number 1. The reason I'm putting it there like that is because, you know, this is a mental math um, course. So what you're going to be doing really is remembering this in your head as you get more and more practice. Right now I have to write it down so you know what I'm doing, but really you're keeping this one in your head and as you get practice it will be much easier to use it. So we have a zero, we have the one, we're going to carry it. Now we work on our, on our middle number just like before. One times two is two, so two plus five, two plus five is seven, now we have 7 for our middle digit, but we're not done because we carried a 1. So 7 plus 1 is 8, right? So we just put an 8 there. And then we just work on our leftmost column like usual. 1 times 1 is 1. So the answer is 180. That's the final answer. Make sure you understand what I'm doing because when you understand this basic technique, all two-digit multiplication problems are going to really follow the same pattern. You do still have to carry because when you multiply, you're going to get some large numbers sometimes. But it's much easier than writing it all down uh, you know, and adding it up. And, and you at least have a chance of doing this in your head. And with practice, you will get there. So 5 times 2 is 10. We write the 0. We carry the 1. We keep it in our head. Then we do 2 plus 5 gives us 7 plus the 1 we carry gives us 8. Now we're done with that. Leading column, 1 times 1, gives us 1. All right, our next problem is 16 times 20. We proceed in exactly the same way. 6 times 0 is going to give us 0, so that's our rightmost digit. Now we do the crisscross. We have 1 times 0 gives us 0, so 0 plus now 6 times 2, we have 12. So here we run into the same problem. In all of the other 
problems prior when we were doing the crisscross when you did the multiplication and the adding you got a, a single digit number so you could just sort of remember it and put it in there here you're going to need to, to carry something because you have 6 times 2 is 12 so we just write the 2 down and again we put a 1 up here and I'm not really even putting this one in any particular place. I'm not really putting it over any particular column. I'm just sort of putting little dots around it to remind you that that's floating around in your head. Remember that you put the two there, it's really 12. So you have to have that one floating around somewhere. Next, we work on the leftmost column. One times two is two, plus the one we carried is three, so 320. Uh, again, just review. Six times zero gives us zero. Then we had zero plus the 12, right? 0 plus the 12 gets gave us 12. So we put the 2 here. We carried a 1 in our head. We knew we had a 1 left over. Now 1 times 2 is 2 plus the 1 we carried is 3, 320. Now yes, you do have to carry a little bit, but it is easier than multiplying digit by digit and having two large three-digit numbers to add up to get a final sum. You're, you're really able to do it in your head with some practice. Okay, our next problem is 25 times 18. And what you're going to find is that all of the future problems really obey all of the rules. You just need to do the little bit of carrying when you, when you need to. So if you can handle that in your head, if you get practice with it, grab a calculator, get good at it, it'll help you out tremendously. If you're doing it by hand on paper, this is still a faster method. So what we do is work on the right-hand column. 8 times 5 is 40. 40 is too big to write down, so we put a 0 and we carry a 4 like this. Now again, I'm not really writing this 4 in any particular column like you typically think about it because really you're, you're going to end up remembering this in your head because you are trying to do this mentally. So we have a 4 floating around. Now let's do our crisscross. 2 times 8 gives us 16. So we have 16 plus 5. 16 plus 5 gives us 21. 21 plus 4 gives us 25. But again, I have 25. I can't write 25 down here for my middle digit. I write 5 and I carry a 2 like this. I'm going to write a little dotted lines around there telling you that it's just floating around mentally. Now our leading digit 2 times 1 is 2 plus 2 gives us 4. The answer is 450. Now one could argue, yeah, you do have to do a little bit of carrying here. It's not quite as easy as some of the earlier problems, but when you really do this by hand, you really most people don't have any hope of doing it mentally. But the fact that we could do this relatively easily without a lot of steps here and getting the right answer of 450 really does say a lot and with practice you'll get good at it. So 5 times 8 is 40, 0 carry the 4, we do the crisscross 16 plus 5 gives us 21 plus 4 gives us 25 so we write 5 carry the 2 then 2 times 1 is 2 plus 2 is 4, 450. Alright our next problem is 20 times 36. Start in the right hand column. 0 times 6 is 0, so we put a 0 down there. Then we do crisscross. We have 12 plus 0. 12 plus 0, so we have 12 is our middle digit, but we can't write 12, so we put a 2. We carry a 1 floating around up here. Now for our leading digit, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. The answer is 720. Okay, here we have 72 times 24. Work in the right hand column. 2 times 4 gives us 8, so we'll write that down, then we go crisscross. This gives us 28, 7 times 4 is 28 plus 4, so we have 28 plus 4 gives us 32, but 32 is too big, so we write a 2 here, we carry a 3, and it just kind of floats around. Then we work on the left-hand column, 7 times 2 is 14, plus 3 is 17, so we write a 17 down. Answer is 1,728, so again, 2 times 4 gives us 8, crisscross 28 plus 4 gives us 32 so write 2 carry the 3 14 plus 3 gives us 17 1728 okay the next practice problem is 91 times 34 work in the right hand column 1 times 4 gives us 4 then we do crisscross 9 times 4 is 36 36 plus 3 is 39 but 39 is too big to write so we put a 9 we carry a 3 and it just kind of floats around up here then we do the left column. 9 times 3 is 27, plus 3 gives us 30. 3,094. Okay, now we have 47 times 45. Work in the right-hand column. 7 times 5 is 35. We can't write 35 down, so we write 5. And we carry a floating 3. I'm just going to write up here somewhere. Next, we work on the middle digit. We have 4 times 5 gives us 20. 7 times 4 gives us 28. So 20 
plus 28 gives us 48. So we have 48 with a crisscross plus the 3 gives us 51. We can't write 51 here, so we'll write a 1. We carry the 5 like this. Okay, then we work on the leading digit. 4 times 4 is 16 plus the floating 5 that we just carried. 16 plus the 5 is going to give us 21. So 2,115. All right, our final problem is going to be 19 times 53. Proceed as usual. In the right-hand column, 9 times 3 is 27. So we write a 7 and we carry the 2 and it just kind of floats up here. Now we work on the crisscross. We have a 3 plus 9 times 5 is 45. So 3 plus 45 uh, is going to give us 48. And so we have 48 from the crisscross plus 2 is going to give us 50. We can't write 50, so we just put a 0, carry the 5, off floating off to the left here. Then we work on the left-hand column. 1 times 5 is 5, plus 5 gives us 10, so we just finally write the 10, 1007. So that is a good introduction to what I call crisscross multiplication. It's very powerful and very easy for anyone to pick up when you have kind of smaller numbers because there's no carrying involved. And those were sort of the numbers that we had in the beginning of, of this lesson here. And if only thing you use this for is for those smaller digit numbers like 10 times 12 or like 11 times 14 or something like that or 21 times maybe 22 then you will have a tremendous asset to use on your exams but if you just give it a little bit of practice pull out a calculator write some problems down and practice with a little bit of borrowing and, and a little bit of carrying that you have to do here then you'll get very good at these simple little carrying techniques and you'll be able to multiply things like 89 times 84 in your head or even if you're using a piece of paper with minimal math and with the faster method. It's not really intended to replace the other way of multiplying that we learn in school. It's just a different way that's sometimes faster. It can really shave minutes off of your exam or off of your test and when you get good at it you'll have a method and a technique that's going to give you a leg up over your students and over your peers. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.